Okay, um, when I prepared this uh, talk about capabilities, uh, you can see it says the short version. Uh, I actually thought we had uh, more time. So uh, this has been boiled down and it focuses on the qualitative data that we co collected during the Learn to Compete project that John uh, talked about uh, just before. When I say qualitative, uh, normally I work with a lot of data. Uh, so we're talking about that we interviewed around 100 multinational companies and around 200 linked domestic companies to those multinationals. I will come back to the, the reason why we did that. Um, the main reason is that I would like to, or we would like to look at whether FDI is actually building domestic firm cap capabilities. That was what we looked at. And when we looked into the literature, we saw that a lot of these studies were using what we call an indirect approach. They were studying whether the share of multinational companies in a sector is actually increasing the average productivity levels of domestic firms in that sector. Nothing about whether they are directly linked or whether it's just what I call externalities that is actually generating these spillover effects. And we tried with this approach. I think it's quite novel. I have, never, I have not seen it before, at least, to trace these domestic firms and link them to these multinationals to see whether we can actually disentangle some of these uh, FDI spillover patterns to domestic firms. So what we actually have here is that the common feature of FDI spillover literature is that they measure these indirect effects. So basically the studies, they look at the links uh, between the increase of the presence of MEs on the improvements of domestic firm productivity. That can be in horizontal aspects, so firms in the same sector as the multinational, but it could also be, be in the vertical dimensions. So whether it's upstream or downstream spillovers. What we found in the literature, there is a couple of papers in the management literature, but in the economics literature, we do not see a lot of distinction between what we call indirect spillover and externality effects from what we call the direct effects. So how do we actually see the firms that engage actively with the multinational are they gaining more in terms of productivity by interacting directly with the firm or multinational than a firm that does not inter interact with the multinational in the same sector? So controlling for these aspects. We have a lot of literature stating, and I've just cited some of the people that most of you know, I hope, that Arrow, he uh, emphasized early on in 69 that Knowledge diffusion is not an automatic process, and it, it actually is dependent on the direct relationships between firms. That is actually also uh, confirmed indirectly by Hirschman in his book from 1558, that the lower the absorptive capacity is in a country. So you can also refer to the Hausmann Hidalgo lack of economic complexity. The, the lower the probability of actually experiencing these indirect spillovers. And that is actually also what we see in the papers, in the publications, that in countries with a lot of economic complexity, in a lot of Asian economies, we see a lot of spillover effects in the studies. Whereas in Africa, we see lower spillover effects in the estimates. This is, Hirschman would say that this was what he wrote in 58. So nothing new about this but we don't know much about these direct effects. So what we do is that we try to disentangle the direct from the indirect effects on these domestic firms. And this is the novel approach. And we ask these simple questions, interviewing 102 FDIs, and we link those 102 FDIs to the 226 domestic firms. Let me just from the outset say, just describe what we're actually doing. So everybody knows that this has been not an easy process. We actually asked a lot of the, all of the investment promotion agencies in the countries that we went to. Asked them to identify the 15 most important MEs in the country. Then we went to these MEs and asked them, these MEs, you can see this is the case for Vietnam. And then we asked them to provide their suppliers, the domestic suppliers that they have, the domestic customers they have, and the competitors they had. You can see here in the Vietnamese case 
They have a lot of domestic suppliers, domestic customers, and so forth. Let me just show you the picture for Kenya. This is how it looks for Kenya. Asking MEs, you can see there's not a lot, of, not a lot of what we call Hirschman linkages. So there is not a lot of economic complexity. They are not trading with the MEs. They are not trading as much with uh, the domestic firms as we see in the Vietnamese case. They have lower economic complexity as such. Here, because some of you would say the, those that know Kenya well, they will say this cannot be true. But this is the updated version where we include information whether MEs they trade or engage, interact with other MEs. So you can see in, for example, the firm number one in Nairobi doing packaging is actually engaging with a lot of other MEs as suppliers, but also as customers. Those are in the red. So there is a lot of engagement in the Kenyan case between firms, but it's between MEs and not so much between MEs and domestic firms. And this is a general picture we see in Africa compared to Asia, where the domestic firm is engaging more with MEs than we see in the African case. What would that suggest? Indirectly or directly, we would actually, thinking about Hirschman's book, we would say that FDI spillovers are going to be less pronounced in the African setting than in the Asian setting. Given time, this, we also do a lot of other things in the papers. We're actually looking at whether uh, a lot of uh, literature is actually discussing whether uh, if the ice spillovers only work if it's uh, producing intermediates for other domestic firms that you only learn via the intermediary process. And we see, for example, in Kenya that it's only, I cannot see here, it's a, over on, under 10%, I guess, uh, that is, uh, of 3% is actually for intermediates, and most of it is final goods production. That could suggest that spillovers are also, in the Kenyan case, less likely to occur between MEs and domestic firms. In the Vietnamese case, we can see that 61% of the engagement between domestic firms and FDI firms, or MEs, is actually through the intermediary process. And that increases the scope for learning. The same goes for when we look at whether they trade, Mons talked a little bit about this as well, but we actually find in these processes that spillover effects are less likely to occur, occur through trade patterns than through FDI patterns. So direct engagement through FDI, so presence of MEs in the country, spillover effects and building capabilities is more likely to occur when the firm is present in the country compared to when they trade across borders. That is also what we found very significantly in the study. So if we could go to the summary of the findings, we have some papers on this. Let me just, so I can make sure that I actually get all of it. Sorry about this. So we find, first of all, that there are very few linkages between MEs and domestic firms in Sub-Saharan Africa compared to Asia. But something that we didn't present here, that when these linkages are present in the African setting, they are more likely to lead to direct spillover effects. So where, where, where both the domestic firm and the M&E state that they have transferred knowledge to the other firm, also the domestic firm. I, I don't know if John is going to come in uh, to talk about this, but what we also found is not, it's not technology. It is not machinery. It is man management skills that is transferred. It's uh, logistical processes that are transferred between these firms, MEs and domestic firms. So it's not so much physical technology that we actually see upgraded grades are. A large part of the direct vertical linkages is done through formal contractual arrangements. That is also important, especially for the IPAs that we interviewed. So when we see these transfers actually happening, they are actually stated, stipulated in a contract. And that was a big surprise to us because a lot of us are thinking about these processes as automatic. 
But if we think about what Arrow said in 69, they are not automatic. They actually have been thinking about this and uh, observed this for a long time. And this is also what we see in our study, that it's not an automatic process. There is a pol room for policy in this aspect. Then we also have that direct knowledge transfers are likely to occur through uh, FDI uh, as compared to trade. And this is uh, consistent with the view that tacit knowledge uh, transfers are more likely to occur through localized linkages. There is a lot of theory on this. And linking to the Hausmann and Hidalgo work, we see clearly that lack of economic complexity in African industry makes direct linkages an important player. They cannot rely on indirect linkages as much as we see in Asia. We shouldn't expect that FDI have similar effects. It's not the same mechanisms that is at play in the African setting as in the Asian context. Good, thank you. Thank you.